Although I've taught on and off for 20 years, I've never actually taken a creative writing class myself. Never had my material workshopped, as the term goes. When I try to imagine what it might be like, it seems to me that it must be a powerful and unsettling experience. A miniature version of the whole process of bringing out a book, with the editing, publishing, reviewing, and sales all jumbled up and compressed into a single tumultuous half hour. There you sit, listening to a room full of people appraising something born in the innermost regions of your psyche and brought forth by efforts that probably stretched you to the limits of your abilities. These 10 or 15 pages are who you are as a writer, for now, fully exposed, and the discussion is going to have a highly charged impact on you. Whatever the general verdict, the chances are you're going to come out feeling overwhelmed, whether by euphoria or by despair. The class's response to Nazarene's chapter was favorable, though perhaps not as warmly so as I'd expected. I spoke last, as I usually do, and it's possible that this slight lack of warmth made me more emphatically enthusiastic than I might have been otherwise. I don't remember what I said, but I do remember a shift in the atmosphere as I spoke, an air of faintly sardonic attentiveness settling on the students as they sat listening to my words of praise. I didn't interpret this as envy so much as the reluctant registering of the thought that the class, which had seemed to be a fairly uniform ability till now, till now, was after all going to have a star and that this was going to be Nazarene. Not necessarily a calamitous thought, but one that has to, had to be adjusted to in some way. Nazarene herself appeared pleased with the way things went. Though contrary to my general hypothesis, she didn't seem overwhelmed, and she certainly didn't effuse in the way some students do after a positive response. I suspected she was confident in her abilities, no doubt glad to have had them recognized, but too much her own critic to be all that affected by other people's views. And this too, this unflustered reaction of hers seemed to me the mark of a real writer. So that was, like, that was sort of the first appraisal of that, me trying to remember. I mean, I taught her for one term. Two years before she got back in touch with me, three years before this began. So I, I had to, it was quite an effort to, to recall, you know, what w the nature of, uh, of our exchanges had been, but I tried. And then so I then went, went back to uh, went back to that moment later on in the book. I described Nazarene's reaction to my praise of her writing as unflustered, and so it appeared at the time. But of course it could not have been anything of the kind. When you have as much at stake as students do in these expensive, highly competitive programs, you're not going to be unflustered by your teacher's enthusiasm, however confident you may be in your abilities. I know this from my own experience. I studied English literature at university. There were no creative writing classes on offer, but my tutor was a well-known poet, and one day I plucked up the courage to hand him a sheaf of my poems. He was reluctant to take them. But a few weeks later, I received a letter from him in which he praised them and encouraged me to go on writing. His words had a powerful, really almost a shattering impact on me, one symptom of which was that for a very long time I was unable to relate to him as a normal human being. Having never been daunted by him before, or no more than any student is by their tutor, I suddenly found it hard to talk to him. I became nervous and awkward. Every exchange between us left me feeling anxious that I'd said something crass or offensive that would forfeit his good opinion. By giving me explicit authorization to think of myself as a writer, he had become entangled in my fate, which in turn had imbued him, or more precisely caused my mind to flood its image of him with godlike powers. So I have to assume, or at least admit the possibility, that Nazarene had in fact been highly flustered by my admiration, and that as with my tutor, the experience had transformed me from a teacher respected merely out of convention into a figure of heightened power, similarly implicated in her fate. 